Hello everyone. Welcome to Wellness University online information session. My name is Yulia and I'm here together with my colleagues Agneta, the admissions officer, and our lovely students David and Muhammad, who will also talk to us about their experience in studying at Wellness University. So thank you once again everyone for joining us and I hope you will have fun together with us. So first off, um, I would like to introduce our agenda. So as I said, our topic is going to be focusing on the admissions, uh, admissions and financial support at Vilnius University. Uh, afterwards, we would go with some uh, of our students' experiences here, how they applied, what issues they have, uh, how they solve them. And afterwards, we will go with most frequently asked questions. Or we will also proceed with your guys' questions that you've asked. And you are also welcome to ask your questions about admissions and studies here uh, down in the comments or in our live Facebook feed. So, okay, let's talk a little bit about Vilnius University in general. So, Vilnius University is the oldest and the biggest university in Lithuania. And also, we are one of the oldest universities in Europe. We are constantly ranked as number one best university in Lithuania. And now we are holding top 1.5% of the best universities in the world according to the QS rankings. So as we are very old, very strong classical university, but also we are having a lot of scientific potential and innovations uh, in all the study fields of our researchers are uh, world renowned and also we have top collaborations with international corporations like Huawei Technologies and Ernst & Young and so on. So yeah, and we have representing international studies in any study field. So any one of you who are interested in studies may find their own path and their own program which you will definitely fit in and be interested. So without further ado, I would like to pass my uh, pass the stage to my colleague Agneta, who will talk about the general document requirements and application requirements in more details. Okay, okay. thank you, Yulia. Hello to everyone again. Uh, as Julian said, my name is Agnetta. For those who already um, contact me, so hello. Uh, and for those who will decide to proceed with the application procedure, I just want to stress out that you're always welcome to ask questions, to make a call, to write me an email. I'm happy to help uh, all, all applicants. Anyway, um, briefly, I will go through the um, uh, application procedure. For those who are um, thinking and uh, not uh, decided yet to become a student at uh, Vilnius University. So uh, it's quite easy. First, what you have to do is fill in a line application. All the documents are submitted online. You don't have to send any, any paper copies. Uh, you have to scan and upload the necessary documents. While applying, you will receive a checklist, what documents to submit, uh, what next to do. So this application system is very intuitive, so it's uh, quite easy to manage. Uh, I guess uh, later on uh, students will confirm how they manage this application system. Uh, also, uh, when you submit, you need to, to wait while we will be evaluating the application. Uh, evaluation procedure is consists from two uh, aspects. First of all, is your uh, qualification evaluation. Your, um, we are evaluating if your qualification fits the requirements. Uh, is it at least uh, applies for our uh, qualification uh, rules and regulations? And the second part is your um, evaluation uh, at the academic level when the 
program coordinators, the faculty uh, officials, they will check if the, your candidacy fits their requirements. They will provide motivation interview if needed. And if everything is uh, good, you are uh, meeting uh, the requirements, you will receive an offer. Uh, if you will agree with the offer, uh, that means it's time to plan your arrival. And uh, in order to arrive, uh, you need to apply for visa. We also are mediating on that. We have a specialist who will provide you all necessary information on how to apply, uh, what documents to submit, what are the deadlines? And for those who do not need any visa sent to Lithuania, just buy a ticket and plan your arrival to Lithuania and start your journey and adventure in the world. Okay, so uh, general document requirements for the application. Uh, that would be, uh, of course, graduation documents are very, very important for our application. Uh, for bachelor degree programs, we need secondary, uh, secondary school leaving certificate or diploma and or your academic transcript of the grades you collected. And so for master programs, we need bachelor degree uh, diploma certificate and it supplements the uh, grades you collected as well. Uh, also, we are looking for English language proficiency documents. Normally, it's uh, IELTS, TOEFL, or Cambridge English certificate. Um, in case you have something else or uh, some other document can confirm your English, prof English language proficiency, you should always in contact us, we will check, we will evaluate, and we will consult what to do next. Uh, your passport copy, ID copy, uh, and uh, also very important document, motivation letter, which is included in the application, and recommendation letter for bachelor studies. One uh, recommendation for master studies, two recommendations. I want to stress out that we actually read those documents, so you should pay attention to those as well. It's not just like for fun, we are really, really, uh, uh, the faculty uh, academics, they really, really need and they actually pay attention uh, on those documents and application fee of 100 euros. It's, uh, this application fee must be paid. It's obligated to everyone and it's not refundable. And it's a part of application. I want to also pay attention that uh, without the application, unfortunately, we do not uh, consider the application. And of course, uh, some programs have specific requirements, which also be, uh, should be checked. You can always contact us to clarify what are the specific requirements. And also, it's listed in our web page. So um, I'm not going into specific program uh, requirements, so just pay attention that there are. Uh, also, very important thing on the financial support for international students. So we have a couple uh, of uh, opportunities how to get the financial support. So for European uh, you know, citizens and European economic area uh, citizens, they have a possibility to apply for a state funded place, which means that uh, Lithuania, the government of Lithuania will fund your studies, will pay your tuition fees instead of you. So uh, those who apply uh, uh, for these uh, uh, requirements, they should go apply uh, according to the different um, regulations and different times, uh, time durations, because they have to apply together with Lithuanian students. But also, uh, do not hesitate to contact if you have any further questions on how to do that. And, and uh, for also, the government of Lithuania is giving state scholarships for full-time master degree and integrated studies. And also, since the government is funding it, they have created a list uh, of target countries or, or which citizens can apply uh, for these uh, scholarships. So the countries are listed there. You can see them. And the deadline for those um, scholarships is um, May 1st. So it's basically the last call. Yeah, for, for those applications and also before applying you have to contact also us we will explain you what to do what documents to submit and what to do next we will guide you through our procedure as well um yes university implemented some new thing as tuition fee waivers uh, university is willing to waive tuition fees for non-eu uh, citizens and uh, non European economic areas. Uh, that means that your tuition fees will be covered by the university. 
and uh, the deadline is also May 1st, so it's also the last call for those. Uh, what you need to pay attention is that uh, these scholarships are given not only based on your GPA, on your uh, grades you collected uh, in your previous studies, but uh, on the motivation, on um, how um, really dedicated you are according to, uh, to the studies. Maybe you are some creative person, you already published some books or articles, and you are actually really, really uh, eager to study uh, your uh, studies in Lithuania. Um, so this is what we are paying attention. And uh, we are selecting um, students who are really uh, one who really need this efficient uh, waivers and um, who really, really uh, are eager to study in our university. So the selection is also made by the uh, faculty. So while applying, also pay attention that you are being already supervised, already checked. So in order to get this efficient waiver. Um, yes, the Faculty of Law also introduced some special scholarships only for their study program and also for master degree program, uh, master degree level, and for um, certain countries. So they're also selecting while applying, they are checking your application as well, and they are selecting according to their opinion the most, uh, uh, the students who have the most potential to, to be those uh, gifted students, as we said. Um, also, uh, Institute of International Relations and Political Sciences, also they have patients with us. Uh, they're also selecting the same way, um, they also select candidates uh, the same way. And uh, that would be all if you, in case you have any queries on the deadlines, on the documents to submit, and how to apply for these scholarships. So you always have, uh, are welcome to contact us. We will uh, guide you through these procedures. Uh, more specifically. Now I'm just going briefly through all of these opportunities. And also very important topic on the visas and temporary residence permits. So there are some few uh, main points you have to pay attention. So it's very easy for EU citizens and European uh, economic area citizens. You do not need any visa to enter Lithuania and you can stay there up to three months without declaration of your stay in Lithuania. According to the uh, European Union law, uh, even, uh, even though you are a European Union citizen, you need to declare officially your uh, stay in Lithuania at the local immigration office. You are getting a certificate confirming your right to stay there. And the certificate is out for five years. So still, no matter what, if you're a European Union citizen, you have a free movement with no limitations, you still have some obligations here in Lithuania. And uh, for non-EU citizens, who has uh, who is visa free? You also can arrive to Lithuania without any document and stay there up to three months. However, you need to obtain B type visa. So that means when you arrive within those three months, you will apply for the national B type visa at the local immigration office. Uh, we will prepare necessary documents. We will guide you how to do that, where to go, how to apply. So it's manageable, it's, uh, it's easier as long as you follow the requirements and deadlines. And for those who need visa to enter the Republic of Lithuania and Schengen countries, that means you apply at the Lithuanian embassy in your country with the documentation we prepare. If your country does not have any Lithuanian embassy, which is more likely because we're a small country, we do not have many embassies in the world, so uh, in that case, students must go to the closest Lithuanian embassy uh, and apply for visa in person. You cannot post your passport to the embassy to get the visa. You have to go there because this is EU law. You have to uh, submit your uh, biometric data. That means all your fingerprints have to be taken and your picture photo has to be made. So you have to go personally. So that means you have to go to a transit country to apply for visa, get the visa, and then come to Lithuania. It's a tricky one, but it also can be managed. Uh, we have many students who manage this. As long as you follow the requirements, if your document file in order to write, so it's quite easy. And after the arrival, a student has to obtain a temporary and permit card, which is issued for one or two years. So we also prepare all the documentation to also remind you all the time students to keep their 
check the, on their legal stay in, in Lithuania because it's very important. Uh, it's not related directly to studies, but it's still very important to, for you to be uh, safe in Lithuania and legal as well. Yeah, I think that's it. And now it's time to um, give a word to our dear students who managed to all be put there somehow. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so you survived everything yes. Ignat already told you, right? Yes, we did. Okay, so maybe you first can talk about yourself a little bit, how you came here, what you do in your life. So first of all, thank you for having us here. Um, uh, I am a Russian national, so I am from the non-EU uh, part of the group of the people applying uh, to the university, and I went, I had to go through the entire procedure of applying to the university. It sounds like a lot of work, but it's worth it. So a little bit about me. Um, I'm actually half Russian, half Syrian, but I have like a very multicultural and multinational um, background. And I came here actually from Germany. I used to study medicine in Germany, but I decided that my passion was not medicine. And now I am actually following my passion by studying international business with my colleague here, David. So yeah, um, what would you like me to say exactly apart, apart from introducing myself? Why, uh, well, uh, I'm mostly interesting interested in how did you come here like you said you were into medicine and into another different studies what clicked in your mind what was that moment that pushed you through going here to Vilnius University well um i wanted to study somewhere somewhere else so i started researching all kinds of european universities i had a list of the top 10 to 20 universities but the, uh, the most important factor for me was the uh, the list of the universities all around the world. I'm not sure what you call it, the QS list? Oh, there are several rankings, yeah, right, rankings. which rank uh, like 20,000 universities in the world according to a certain indicators, and they make a list of best of the best. Exactly. Yeah. On different, uh, it was depending on different factor, factors, that list. And uh, I actually compared the list with the last couple of years. And I noticed that there is a trend of uh, the Vilnius University uh, going up the rankings. So uh, if I remember that correctly, I think it was in 2016 the best 600 in the world, in 2007 it was the best 500, and now the prognosis is that it's going to be the best uh, uh, 400 in the world this year in 2018. And this was uh, a huge factor for me, because that told me a lot about the university, about the city, about the country, before even I arrived here. Okay, thank you so much. So let's move on to yeah. our next lovely student. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. I'm, my name is David Zerna. I have a different history about with my colleague uh, Louis. I got married last year in Lithuanian girl, and uh, I decided to, <laughs> to transfer here. And uh, I was choosing a university that anyway provided me uh, information and possibility to, to study in, in economy, in business. And uh, at the same time, the uh, possibility to to, to com uh, some confrontation with uh, different uh, people uh, from different countries. And uh, I like <laughs> until now. I am very very satisfied for uh, my my studies in Vilnius University. Oh, that's nice. And uh, <laughs> for uh, I would say for all documentation that I had to prepare, uh, it was very stressful, but because uh, the documents are a lot and uh, from <laughs> Italy and uh, but uh, I can say that uh, from uh, Lithuanian side it was very they work very well and uh, for, just only for me was a problem for Italy and that's maybe you can specify what was the problem in case you remember but, uh, yes uh, it was uh, to I, okay I finished my uh, high school studies 10 years ago <laughs> And uh, I had to to go to my from the school, uh, take all uh, documentation, translate in English. Uh, it was just only difficult problem and to prepare documents. But uh, I can find everything anyway. I contact the uh, university and they see me what what was uh, necessary for uh, documentation. Okay, and how was your application process. Do you remember? Do you have any similar issues? Actually, no. From my side, um, I think it was like six months ago. It was uh, um, the, when when I was applying for all, uh, all kinds of universities and I was still choosing my options, 
I was under the impression, of course, thanks to bureaucracy and everything, that it was going to be much difficult than that. But I have to admit, like, uh, when uh, once I applied for Vilnius University and I chose Vilnius University as uh, my number one priority and I signed everything and accepted all as an offer, the process went much easier and faster than I expected. Oh, that's nice to hear. So we are working on that. <laughs> and especially <laughs> Nathan. Yeah, that's her input into our classwork, okay. right? Okay, um, guys, I would also like to ask when you applied, did any one of you have a Skype interview while well, selection process? Yes, uh, I, I had uh, the Skype interview. It was very, for me, it was very also there. I mean, a little bit stressful because I don't know what to say, but when you start, you really come, you are very easy, everything is very easy, and the words uh, go out. Uh, we found uh, to control. I mean, because it's very, very simple. <laughs> Not really. Do you remember the questions you were asked in English? Yes, I uh, asked uh, about uh, the course, how mm -hmm. the main important aspect of the course, and uh, and also, um, yes, okay, it was, uh, yes, these, these things that now I, rem I don't remember uh, every every second of the interview, but uh, this was the main, also my important uh, uh, questions. And, uh, it, Everything was fine. That's nice to hear. So the stress came down when yes, you started, Yes, yes, when right? you start, then mm -hmm. you don't think uh, uh, what you have to say, because I, I think everything go out. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You think uh, your mind go out. Cool, great. So, and speaking about the studies, right? Maybe you have anything else to add to the application process itself? Well, if I may just say, um, mm -hmm. like from my side of the, uh, the interview, that was actually the most pleasurable side of the mm -hmm. entire of, of, of the entire process because that was the first time. Like, of course, you're going to write a lot of emails, you're going to correspond with the uh, the staff, uh, everyone in the university. But that first person, that the first face that you see representing the university, I think for me personally, that was the second factor why I chose from this university, and that was a very pleasurable experience. Oh, nice! So you made a connection right before you. You and the university exactly, personal yeah. one. So I think uh, the actual face-to-face -face Skype conversation made a big impact. Oh, do you think it's a um, good thing to do making a Skype interviews with students? Extremely, extremely. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, but the thing is, the reason why I found it so pleasurable is because of the person. So the person representing the university, of course, has to right. not be that intimidate, uh, intimidating. Uh, and uh, the lady that I talked to was very nice. And I think that's the, that was the reason why I was very relaxed. I told her about myself, my motivation to study, the things I wanted to study. And um, yeah, like from her side, her personality made me relax. And since everything went so well, it actually motivated me even more to start studying and come here as fast as possible. Cool. Yeah, so uh, I think everyone should understand that the Skype interview is not something like uh, when you are sitting with a stone face and just listening to strict words. No, we are not trying to put you into the fear or into the stress situation. It's like just a friendly chat with our potential students in order to uh, understand them better, in order to see what what they are, what is their personality, and, and, and just make friends. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so uh, maybe let's go a little bit to the, your current student life here. I would like to ask both of you what teaching is like here, like what your studies look like, do you have any seminars or, or lectures, how many people are in your group, like everything about your current studies, can you tell? Yes, sure. Well, we're studying both of us international business uh, as a bachelor, and I'm guessing we have around 35 people, which is not a, lo uh, a lot compared to other faculties for other subjects if you study. Um, we have uh, le lectures, we have seminars. Since we study business, we don't have laboratory work because we don't need it, of course. But yeah, like what? You say about our studies. I yes, uh, I I love our studies because actually it's not a typical study where you have just to sit, listen the teacher, and uh, take your notes. But uh, we have many many possibility to to have many discussion. Uh, say our um, 
our opinion during the lecture. And uh, this I personally find very, very interesting and appreciate a lot. That's true. The professors are professional. Uh, the way of teaching is more interactive than just uh, uh, reading, writing, and rewriting in the exam. Uh, and yeah, like I think it's about the style of teaching which makes the whole difference. Yeah. So, do you think our teachers are more uh, formal or are they informal? Maybe you have any connections with your teachers? Do you meet them anywhere in the city or something? <laughs> I think it's a matter of perspective. It's like uh, they're not as formal as, for instance, uh, teachers from uh, uh, countries which are too formal by practice, like, I don't know, Germany, Austria, there the teachers are very formal. They reduce the amount of uh, uh, interactions between uh, the professor and the students. On the other side, we have countries, um, if I'm not, I'm not mistaken, I think like Sweden, where the, teacher, uh, the teachers uh, are on a very informal basis uh, with their students. But I think here, like we hit the sweet spot between formal and informal. It's literally, um, it's, uh, there's a certain, a specific amount of formality, but at the same time, uh, friendship involved in the teaching part. Yeah, so you don't feel stressed when you come to the class and see the teacher. Definitely not. Oh, that's 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 good. That's really yeah, good. So, <laughs> it's really true. I can just only did one things. For example, also mathematics. The teacher that we have this course is very amazing. He, he continue to speak uh, uh, with us and uh, also teach uh, mathematics. Uh, and actually, this we are talking about uh, anyway. Uh, um, how to say a topic that is very strong. I mean, you have to study. And the, when you have this connection with your teacher. You are very relaxed, and uh, this is fundamental. That's very true. Like mathematics, uh, as a as a natural su subject, is supposed to be boring. But the teacher yes. himself, the lecturer, the professor, he makes it interesting by giving life examples, by telling his life story from time to time. And I think that is uh, the way to go when you teach a lot mm -hmm. of students. Yeah. That's interesting when you have this insight about this kind of study subject as mathematics. Interesting somehow. Yeah. This is what, what we do here, actually, at the university. We try to attract students, not just to become academic uh, um, uh, educated, but also educated as a, as a human, just to encourage them to, to get uh, to know the science, and not academically, but also practically. So. OK, so for those of you guys who are watching and asking questions, we will get to your Q&As in a few minutes, like in the two, three minutes. So please be patient and, and just wait a minute, because I want to ask a little bit more practical questions for you. Uh, do you, anyone of you get scholarship, or you know how to get scholarship? Does your study program provide them? Uh, well, since I'm a, I'm a non-European Students uh, with uh, uh, who is studying bachelor, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to take a scholarship. Yeah, for bachelors we don't. Mm -hmm. So, but but you know about your like if yeah. you, if you wish to have a master's, then you you do have. Yes, right? we were informed mm -hmm. about the possibility uh, when we do master's. Mm -hmm. Okay, and do you guys participate in any exchange program, or you were maybe thinking of going somewhere for exchange? Me personally, it's a good question. I probably in future, but uh, as I said before, it's not possible for me to participate now uh, in an exchange uh, um, program. Probably he, he will have a possibility in future. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that should never stop you. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Uh, well, I'm learning French, the French language now, exactly for the reason to go to France, maybe even Strasbourg. I think our university has a um, Yes. Uh, partnership mm -hmm. director, I'm not mistaken. And yes, uh, technically I'm studying international business now, but as a mass, uh, as a master in the future, I would really like to do something, maybe in, go into politics, maybe stay with business. So it depends uh, how it goes. But basically, uh, my plans are to go to France uh, as soon as possible, as soon as I finish with the French language. Great. And as you know, you may come to the exchange after the first year of studies. So, you know, straight after the second semester, you can go to any country. Actually, we now offer more 
than 70 countries around the world where you can go. It's from USA to Australia to Europe to New Zealand, Korea, everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's good that you have chosen already where to go, but just keep in mind that that's not only a restricted opportunities to go around the Europe. You can go everywhere around the world. Okay, so the last question for you guys. Uh, I was wondering what your typical day in your life at university looks like. Where, which campuses you stay in, maybe what libraries do you use or anything, where you go around Vilnius maybe. <laughs> Yeah. I, okay, we can start new. Our, uh, I'm in, sorry, my uh, life in uh, university is okay. Uh, go to the university uh, in the morning, and actually, the, the, the place that I visit is a, especially is a library where I meet my classmates, uh, we, we study together. And uh, in Vilnius, I love every part of Vilnius, uh, really. <laughs> for, for me, it's a, the best city that I, I, I live, where I live until now. And uh, I love uh, Lithuanian people, they're very friendly, not true, and... Uh, <laughs> I believe and, you. Yes, yes, and, uh, and that's it. Thank you. Anything uh, to add? Well, let me think. Well, basically, yeah, we wake up early, we go to university. Uh, I spend a lot of time in the library as well. Because we have to prepare and do a lot of uh, work uh, uh, individually and as groups outside the university, of course. Um, like I am more uh, uh, studies are very important for me, but my social life is uh, is exactly as important for me as well. So whenever I'm not uh, in the university or uh, in the library, I'm actually outside socializing, meeting new people, increasing my network. Uh, the people here are very. Um, Friendly and uh, Vilnius as a city is very international. Uh, most of the people here speak English. For me, it's perfect uh, because I didn't, uh, I don't even have to study uh, Lithuanian because uh, I mean the Lithuanian language. Our international business course is in English, and I already know Russian and I know English. So uh, perfect match. Perfect match. <laughs> Inside the city, I will always find that most of the people speak English, the rest speak Russian. So for me, it was uh, uh, a very nice opportunity. So you adapted easily here, right? Quite, yes. Okay, so thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, so we already have a few of your questions and uh, we made a short list. So uh, as I can see from many of your questions, everyone is interested regarding the language proficiency document, which uh, bothered you. So, okay, so for uh, those who are native speakers whose official language uh, of communication in your country is English, you can skip the requirement to skip this English language proficiency document. You are exempt from this requirement. You don't have to. Uh, also, those students who already have studies, pre the previous studies where this course in English language, so you can also skip the requirement of submitting this English language proficiency document. We accept your previous studies as English language proficiency. Um, those who asking if I can pass English language test on my life. Unfortunately, no, we need to make sure uh, about your English language proficiency before the enrollment. So those who are um, struggling to have English language proficiency document are not native speakers. We offer another possibility. We can test your English language online by, by Skype interview. Uh, my colleague already explained you how it's uh, working. Uh, you are logging in uh, on the set time and date, and you are being asked questions, and you have to answer them. Uh, uh, and uh, while uh, while we doing this interview, we can uh, actually evaluate if you are capable to understand, to speak, uh, to to listen, to to answer the questions. So, as for English language proficiency, um, of course, we are looking into the certificates. This makes uh, our work easier if you do have international uh, certified document. If you don't, don't worry. Always communicate with us. Always try, uh, we are uh, meeting students halfway. We are offering some other possibilities how to evaluate in language proficiency. Also, I can see a question. 
from our uh, student teacher student from Armenia. They ask if they do have scholarship for master's degree studies. So yes, Armenia is in the list of countries who can apply for the scholarship for the state scholarship. And actually, the deadline for that scholarship is first of May. So um, more than a week is left. So. Um, after this uh, uh, session, uh, you can uh, mail me uh, about the requirements. I will let you know how we can speed up the process and you can still uh, catch up with the deadline and submit the documents on time. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, this is the question from my list. Uh, yeah, so we have a few more, so maybe you would help me. Yes, of course. <laughs> okay, of course. thank you. So you guys are asking about Skype interview, and one of our viewers says that Skype is blocked in their country, and what should they do? So first off, I would like to advise you contacting either admissions office. We will link down their email where Agneta will take care of you, or directly contact the faculty you are applying to. Well, just saying that, sorry, I don't have Skype, and we will definitely provide you any opportunity, uh, any know. other source or option, yeah, any other program like WhatsApp, Viber, or even Skype, uh, Facebook Messenger. So we will try to find the best solution in order to uh, you, in order to make possible for you to conduct this interview. So the the tool itself doesn't matter. It matters that you are willing to have the interview and to connect with us. Okay, and another question about Skype. Uh, the question is, do we need Skype interview after being accepted? No, actually the point of Skype interview is actually to, before the acceptance, to get to know you, to see if you are fitting us, uh, and this is the admission enrollment, one of the enrollment procedures. Skype interview. So after you being admitted, unless you want to chat with us and to say hello, mm -hmm. so of course you're welcome to contact us. But uh, I don't think you have the full submission Skype interview for some reason. No, I, there is no point to actually uh, to 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 create some kind of difficulties after the enrollment to provide some interview. No, uh, it's uh, Skype interview is only before enrollment process. Okay, so another question is about the tuition fee waiver. So how can I apply for tuition fee waiver? Uh, actually, you can apply via our online application form when you register at apply.vu.lt and you submit your documents. You have to tick the box that you would like to apply for tuition fee waiver. But you have to keep in mind that you would be asked to write a motivation letter why you think you should receive the tuition fee waiver. Maybe something to yeah. remember? Yeah, basically, uh, you do not have to apply separately for a tuition fee yeah. waiver. You will make a note in the application form that you're willing to get the tuition fee waiver. So for us, it will be your application for, for, for tuition fee waiver. So we uh, also do not create additional requirements, just uh, so with the application, make a note that you are willing to get a tuition fee waiver, and for us it will be enough. So it's it's easy. Yeah. So another question is, what uh, uh, how can person contact the admission office? So all the links will be down below in the end of the presentation. We will have a slide with our social media accounts and with our admission office email. So our admission office is mostly contacting people by email and they're responding like very quickly. I don't know how you guys do that. <laughs> we try our yeah. best. Yeah, so they are really quick to respond and you may ask all of your questions about their admissions process by the email. And uh, one more question I have is what are the requirements to apply for medicine? Agneta, can you follow on that? Uh, yes, of course. So for medicine, since it's uh, first uh, uh, first cycle studies, so we are looking into your school graduation documents. Uh, of course, if we have additional um, post-secondary school um, confirmation that you study some studies after your school, so it's also applicable. And also, one of the most important uh, documents would be SAT test. 
This is the only program we are asking to pass additional tests for the enrollment. That would be SAT test in biology. And uh, SAT test can be taken in your country. You have to apply at SAT office. Uh, they have uh, already scheduled some uh, dates for biology exam. You are passing according to the, their rules, regulations. You're getting a score, which is supposed to be no less than 500. And uh, you are asking SAT office to post this uh, score sheet to the university. That's it. And the rest of the requirements are the same. Uh, also, you will be um, you will be um, arranged an uh, interview, Skype interview with uh, medicine faculty representatives. They will ask uh, certain questions, and if you fit, you will be selected, and you will get an offer. It's just additional requirement for medicine, and also uh, dentistry study program is a CT test in biology. Okay, so we have a few more questions about medicine. I'm glad that you are guys interested in medical studies. And the question is, is the Latvian language a must for medicine studies? So for the integrated study programs in medicine and dentistry, Latvian language is not required because studies are in English. Uh, but for the residency program, we only offer res residency programs in Lithuanian language. So in that case, that would be a must. And another question is, is the medicine program entirely in English? Yes, it is. Okay, so I have also some questions. Um, do we need to apply separately for the program and for scholarships? So like I said, for some scholarships, you do have to apply separately. That would be if you are uh, interested in getting state-funded place that apply for a new citizen, uh, you have to apply at a separate application system. I think Tavita applied, tried to apply for the state-funded place. Yes. Yes, so we have separate system for that because you're applying together with all EU citizens and all Lithuanians as well. And uh, for scholarship, uh, state scholarship uh, for master degree studies for certain countries, you have to apply also online uh, to the um, state funded um, to the funding institution, which is uh, coordinated by the Ministry of, of Education. So, but also we provide all the links, all the details on how to manage the applications at the same time. So. But for the tuition fee waivers, which we offer, you do not have to apply separately. You just make a note that you are interested in this possibility. And uh, while you're applying, you're already being checked, monitored by a faculty representative. Uh, they are checking your motivation letters, uh, recommendations, and your educational documents, and they are selecting. And uh, selected students are being informed about the, about the results. And uh, also, uh, there is a question, if I apply for several programs, should I prepare a separate recommendation letter? Yeah, that would be actually, uh, that makes sense, of course, to provide separate letters. However, uh, we are actually looking into the first priority, and most of the students are being accepted to the first priority. So um, my recommendation would be not to concentrate on, like, three or four programs you are applying because for us it's a little bit red flag that you are lacking of motivation and you're not you are like not very decided which program you are interested in. So my recommendation would be just to concentrate on your first priority. In case you won't be uh, enrolled in this program and you will be moved to the second priority, we will ask you to rewrite the letter or while interview we will ask you to repeat your motivation or provide it uh, uh, just in, in oral way. So do not concentrate on all program motivations, just on your first priority. And later on, if we will see that we are lacking information about you, about your motivation, we will ask you to add. And um, uh, about an authorized copy. Uh, so um, an authorized copy means that uh, actually we are uh, looking uh, certified copies. That means certified copies can be uh, confirmed at the North Republic or some official institution who is doing that in our country. Sometimes it can be court, sometimes, uh, sometimes other institutions, but it should be certified as well. And the scan copies are enough. So for those who are interested, if I do need to send these 
certified copies by post, so no, until we request. Because sometimes we have cases where uh, with uh, documents which are not clear for us, we ask to post. Yeah. But don't post anything just until we notify you about this. And, um, and uh, oh, okay, one question about uh, winter semester. Unfortunately, at our university so far, we have only one enrollment session that would be before uh, September. If we will see what we have uh, in Paris and need to open up a uh, spring semester in the future, of course, we will think about that. But so far, um, since Lithuanians are also applying once a year, so we are organizing our enrollment session only once a year. And we do not have winter sessions so, so far, but we'll see. And um, interview for cybersecurity. Okay, so for cybersecurity, and uh, also for medicine. Um, so for medicine, okay, guys, I cannot to say exact questions what will be asked in the interview because I mean, like I, um, this is not top secret, but uh, the faculty, they have their reasons why it's not, uh, these sessions are not open widely uh, for everyone with you. Uh, but uh, just to calm you down, I mean, like, it's not like, uh, like uh, really explained, it's, uh, not similar like you are sitting in in, in the uh, opposite side of camera and you being asked like uh, I don't know like at a torture session. No, it's not like that. I mean like you're being asked basically about uh, uh, why Lithuania, why this university, what you're going to do after your studies with this diploma, what are your plans? So basically, it's about that because we need to know uh, will you fit according to your views, to your opinion, will you fit into our community, into our great international community. So basically, it's about that. Uh, of course, maybe some specific questions from the specific study area will be asked. Uh, don't be surprised about that. And so, of course, we have a right to ask that. So also, these will be asked. But uh, as far as I know, no one actually complained about that, that the interview was too much complicated, too harsh, too strong. It's um, not about uh, finding out how much uh, specific knowledge you have. It's about your personality. I think this is what's important during the motivation interview. Yeah, like students say that the personality, the way you chat. Yes. Friendly talk. Friendly talk. Friendly talk. Just, yeah. Just okay, so maybe one question our colleagues me answer someone is asking about the dormitories do you guys rent dormitories uh i do actually mm -hmm. and how much do you pay for the dormitory um i think it's around 90 euros mm -hmm. uh our dormitories like they have a big variety of um uh, choices basically there are rooms in specific dormitories for just one person in other dormitories uh, we have a room for two people and in others for three people in the same living and uh, sleeping between rooms uh so basically uh, is the question specific or in general no no it's just generally can we rent a dormitory okay. so oh uh, yeah of course. you do <laughs> uh and through the website i think uh, uh -huh. all the information is provided you have to uh, apply for it find the email the correspondence to the person who to ask it for and um, apply of course as soon as possible if you have uh, uh, if you prefer living alone or with one person instead of with uh, two other people. So yeah, that would be my advice. Do you live alone? No, I live with one person, with okay. a friend. Ah, you live with your friend, right? Uh, we were lucky enough that the uh, nice person from the dormitory, she actually put me with a colleague of mine that started the same program than oh. that, that I did. So it was a very nice coincidence. That's nice, that's nice. So yeah, and the second part of the question was uh, about the information. So like you said, all the information about the dormitories can, found, can be found on our website. Uh, somewhere uh, when you just browse the study programs on the left hand side, you will see practical information and uh, in that, Submenu, you will find find an information about dormitories. Okay, so uh, another question is: My official certificate is in October. Can I apply now? Wow, 
Uh, yeah, I received plenty of those questions. Uh, it depends. Like I said, I do not want to confirm that yes, everyone who is graduating in October can apply because basically it's the, you are way, way after the deadline. All your documents must be ready before that certain deadline. Uh, but like I said, we need to check your documents and to see how many credits are missing. Uh, is it just the diploma will be issued in October and you already graduated? So this is another case, of course. In that case, you can be accepted. We can uh, agree to receive a temporary confirmation on your graduation and wait for diploma in October. It's okay. But if you will be sent your test only in October or pass all your exams, final exams in October, that can be a tricky one. But like I said, we are looking into every case individually. We are checking everything. And uh, just uh, my recommendation would be to send uh, your queries and scan copies of the documents you have so far to the email, by email and we will check them, we will consult with the faculty what are the possibilities and we will offer the solution for you. That would be my brief answer because it depends, we need to check. If I may add something to that, um, yeah, sure. I think what the students are referring to is uh, the British system or any other system which actually only issues the certificates in October, because that's what happened with me when I was mm -hmm. in my high school. Uh, I did the A levels and all of our, we did the exams in June, but uh, the actual certificate and the mark came out uh, uh, only in October, so people had to wait for it. What our school recommended our students back in the day to do was actually to ask uh, to provide all the marks uh, mm -hmm. before, uh, the, the students took before, and yeah. of course uh, um, maybe even ask the teachers for their if the teacher knows the students. I'm talking about people in school, high schools, not other universities. Uh, maybe even provide um, uh, the expected mark depending yeah. on their yearly. I see. Okay, so in that case, yeah, of course, we can, uh, like I said, each case is individual. So in that case, of course, we would accept the students, uh, give them what we call conditional enrollment, let's say that. But uh, there are some situations when the students only graduate and then they are defending their final thesis and, and passing final exams only in October. So in that case, they are missing some, some amount of credits which is necessary for our enrollment procedure. So, like I said, it depends. But yes, in case your final certificate is issued later than you graduate, so of course you can go uh, go along with the registration and accept the temporary confirmation. So expect it to like like it said. And uh, okay, so I have also some questions here. Um, the question is uh, interesting that if um, I am accepted, is it possible to defer uh, studies for one year? So, I mean, like, it depends. If you are accepted and you want to differ immediately, so um, what's the point <laughs> to get enrolled this year? I mean, like, um, it's possible, but it has to be a good reason why you want to differ. Yes, that is. It's supposed to be some reason, some, I don't know, illness, some, some really serious issues. And uh, if you want just to enroll to get the admission letter and suspend, so I don't think that's how it works, actually. But it's possible, of course, it's possible. Uh, or we just recommend to enroll next year and just to think this through why you really, I really need this enrollment this year. Maybe we can defer to next year your enrollment procedure. And uh, also, the medicine students have also provided a recommendation letter. Of course, we have to provide one recommendation letter. That means since they are applying for the first cycle program. And how this works. Uh, so, uh, recommendation letters are, are to be submitted uh, online while applying. You have to notify the person who will put the recommendation online. Uh, this person will get an email that you need to submit a recommendation. They will be asked several questions. They will reply and click submit and that's it. There is a recommendation on your behalf in our system. And um, and about uh, uh, notification uh, on the enrollment. Uh, so, um, we will send uh, to all students, uh, we are communicating to all applicants uh, about the enrollment procedure, we are uh, updating on the status uh, all the time. So, in case you will be, um, so in case you will be uh, offered a study place, of course, we will send an offer letter to you. Uh, in case you will be denied, of course, we send a regret letter for you. That unfortunately, you are not selected for this program, but maybe you want to try another program. 
and uh, yeah so we will definitely notify to them with an email and um, <laughs> okay so i think so i can it. i yeah. can take all uh the question is how diverse is the university and where in the world are the students from so uh i first will provide you with some data and afterwards i will uh, ask the students about it so basically we have people from more than 70 countries studying right now right away in Vilnius University in different programs. Uh, also, I would have to say that we have a lot of students coming for exchange programs, both from Europe and from all over the world. So in one class, you may meet people from China, Korea, Australia, USA, everywhere like it's 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 very mixed up culture and how is your class guys how many people from what countries are they uh, we have uh, many different from many students from different countries uh, for example from india from iran from china from uh, portugal uh, from france and uh, they with them we have a very good uh, rapport and uh, and uh, especially we study international business and, and this is, I think is very fundamental uh, to understand to learn, yes, <laughs> to learn many different cultures. I don't know if you want to give them something. I don't know. <laughs> Do you like the multicultural environment here? Yes. Yes, of course. Do you interact with Lithuanians, with Lithuanians uh, while studying? Of course, course you interact, but I'm like, a, <laughs> like a uh, all the time actually. Uh, for us, we're we're a group of students studying the same thing, so we actually go to libraries together, we study together, and we discuss different subjects together, especially in those seminars and specific subjects. And it's actually the reason why it's, uh, why the conversations are so interesting because you see all the perspectives from different cultures, for, uh, from different uh, nationalities. Cool. Oh, that's a very interesting question. We have, can I meet you? I will come to Vilnius for two days in the end of May. That's interesting because which one of us you would like to meet? <laughs> you may you specify down in your questions below which one you would like to meet and why. We will arrange it maybe Just, more specifically. Uh, in general, of course, admission office is uh, open to everyone. And we are kind of receiving this kind of request uh, and we are accepting all applicants, all the school children with their parents, grandparents and the whole family, bunch of friends uh, coming to our office together and uh, we are providing uh, uh, more information. So admission office is open to everyone guys, so if you want to uh, actually to meet uh, me uh, and also have queries on the uh, admission procedure, so just email me. We will schedule a time when it's comfortable for you and we will meet, of course, in person. And I think David also was before the enrollment. You met me in the office, you came, yes. Yeah, so we, yes. we agreed on time when it's comfortable for David. And he came and we discussed uh, the admission or enrollment procedure. So, yeah, it's, it's manageable. Yeah, just if you want to browse how the Linux University looks like, what's the environment, and just meet our people, you are very welcome to come here and we will try our best to meet you, greet you, and show you around. Okay, and the one more question is, how many students will be accepted to the medicine program? So this year, as I believe, is 75 students should be accepted, right? Yes, 75 is not much changes, yeah, but so far, this is the number, the limit so far. Yeah, as far as I know, they didn't change it this year, so that's 75 students to be accepted in medicine this year. Okay, what is the university SAT code? Okay, so this SAT code, uh, uh, I have it in my office. <laughs> so just uh, mail me, I, I will definitely send it. And, uh, but uh, recently we uh, experienced that you just see that uh, uh, SAT results should be sent to the university at the SAT office and they know our code and just for them it's enough to know which university to be sent. So they do it a lot, our university for medicine study program. But of course, it will, if you need specific code, I will provide it 
later on personally by email to each of you who is interested. Okay, so someone is asking, are there many Finnish students studying medicine? Well, as far as I know, there is one or two people definitely who are from Finland, right? Uh, I think there are more. Uh, oh. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think there are more. Uh, and uh, for students uh, from Scandinavia, uh, very uh, interested in medicine, they are applying. So it's not uh, hundreds of students, but uh, at least up to for the whole senior years, I think it's up to twenty students from from Finland who who are studying medicine for this program. So it's quite popular among them to study here in Berlin. I guess it's close to home and. It's like it's affordable and yeah. yes just general environment is quite similar you know we are also considered an modern country so people feel comfortable just like the way they would do at home okay so the question is asking please show slide of your contacts so okay definitely we can do that here you go that's our admissions office contact and also our social media. And one more question, is it possible to apply to multiple programs at the same time? So Agneta basically already covered this topic a little bit. Yeah, I can repeat. Uh, yeah, yes, okay. of course, you can apply up to four programs in one application. Uh, you uh, rank your priorities uh, from first to, to, to the fourth. And uh, um, actually, like I said, uh, um, you should be, uh, I mean, like you should, oh, before applying, you should uh, make your, um, make your mind, make your opinion, which program you're really willing to do. Because if student is applying in the same application to the medicine, to the business, and also to the geology program, so that actually uh, shows us that there, there is uh, some problem with the motivation of the student. And uh, so, like, like I said, uh, and you will have to pay only one application fee because you are paying for the application, not for the programs included in the application. Yeah, and uh, just personally, I would like to suggest you if you are not sure which program to choose and you are switching back and forth between priorities, just go to our website and read loudly the program description. Just take a look to the courses that you will be studying during your study program, uh, like say look whether you will like them or not are you interested or not also pay attention to the aim of the studies your opportunities to work after graduation everything is written down in the program description and i hope that it's very beneficial to read those information in order to make your decision and finally find the one program you actually will be willing to study in and you will be happy to study in. Okay, so the question is how many students would be accepted to the intern international, international communication. communication, sorry, uh, I think about 15. Uh, so the minimum is 15, uh, yeah, so the group starts from the 15 uh, students uh, and uh, well, uh, hopefully the uh, there will be bigger groups, but uh, we do not have very strict limit as for medicine for the program. So I mean, like uh, normally, it's uh, uh, like uh, my colleague Sudan said, it's uh, quite small groups, and that means to get a personal approach actually. So it's not like hundreds of students coming to the class. It's not like that. We are eager to to form smaller groups than than, than big groups. Yeah, but that shouldn't restrict you from trying to apply. Yes, of course. Yeah, definitely. So we don't have very strict limits in those social science programs or uh, in humanities programs. Uh, we just form groups in maybe 10, 15, 20 people. So not, not restricted to something particular number. Okay, have you got more questions? Yeah, we do. Okay, the questions, do the students from you get scholarships? So, Agneta, let me repeat. <laughs> yeah, um, it's not, uh, how to say that, it's not scholarships per se, it's a state-funded place, which means you do not have to pay for your study. That means the government of Lithuania is covering all tuition fees during the whole study period. 
So as a youth uh, student, uh, uh, as a youth citizen, you can apply. But I have to stress out that we have a little bit different deadline for that and a little bit different requirements. And but like I said, before um, applying to through those different application systems, you should contact us. We will explain you briefly what to do, send you the links, and help you out with the application as well. If you are willing to uh, self-fund your places, so uh, you have to apply for us, for me, so I also will guide you how to do that as well. Okay, so one more question to our lovely students. Uh, what are the living expenses in Vilnius, such as transportation, food, living costs in the city? So how much you pay for your living here? Um, well, if you look at dormitories, I think 400, 500 euros will be more than enough. It's uh, overall, overall accommodation and food, right? And transportation. If you live in the dormitory, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, 400, 500 euros is going to be more than enough. Um, in the okay, when you start the 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 year, this this time here, you can attend the LSP card where you can. Uh, use a um, discount for uh, public transport and there are other many many uh, offers for different uh, shops and uh, personally i live in uh, in apartment <laughs> with my wife and yeah. uh, i cannot say uh, what you how can uh, cost the expenses living but well i believe in, in it because <laughs> we live in the dormitory and uh, yeah, and you've mentioned the LSP card. So LSP is basically a student card, which proves that you're a student at Wellness University. It has your name, last name, and your photo in it. And it provides you with the opportunity to get 80% off from the public transportation ticket. So as I remember, it's 20 euros per month, unlimited ticket for the public transportation in Wellness. And also, like David mentioned, there are a lot of discounts for students with the student card, which can be used in different bars and cafes and in some concerts. So everywhere, you, you, it's, it's quite cheap to be a student. To be yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And when you lose this opportunity, you kind of getting a little bit stressed out because everything if you have to pay 100% for everything after you've done your study, so it's shocking for some time, but yeah. Yeah, and also the student card is provided for all the cycles of study, from for bachelor, master's, and even for PhD students. So if you are a full-time student of Vilnius University, you will get all the benefits which are provided by the student card. Okay, more questions? Okay, here we go. Uh, do you need to attach the 16 C S E grades? No. Uh, okay, so okay, so it's uh, different. Uh, or only A level. Okay, so um, actually we are looking for A level studies uh, certificate, and students are supposed to have, uh, if I'm not mistaken, no less than two A level subjects pass in the certain areas. So, and also uh, ordinary levels are also looking into those, but A levels are basically what uh, what affects the final decision on 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 the on the uh, enrollment procedure. Mm -hmm. And what if my university has changed the name? So great! So congratulations to the <laughs> university on the new name. And uh, as long as the university is officially accredited, he's uh, legal in that country. And uh, I mean, like when the diploma was issued, so that means we accept the diploma. And uh, actually, we have some kind of database where the changes of the university name status are being updated so we can see uh, the, all the changes. So, in case your university changed the name and the diploma was issued on another university's name, we can see it and we actually be notified that no matter if the university changed the name or status, those diplomas at the time were well, issued like that, and we should accept those. So don't worry about that. So it doesn't affect anything as long as this university is legal, the documents are legal, and uh, issued in the way it should be issued. Okay, that's one more question for you. Okay. Oh, 
Okay. <laughs> So I need to check the, uh, specifically what is going on because uh, it's us at um, some SAT scores were sent to university uh, a long time ago, and it says awaiting fulfillment. So um, can you please uh, write us an email on that to to the email address uh, with your name and surname so that we can actually check what is going on in the case because I need to see which case is. Each case is, 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 is different. Okay, so I think we're done with the question. Yeah, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you everyone for your questions. It was a pleasure asking you and providing you with more information. And as I said, if you have any more questions, any specific ones, other broader ones, please don't hesitate to contact our admissions office. And also follow us on Facebook, go to our Instagram, see the beautiful photos of Vilnius and Vilnius University, and get the latest information and news from our Twitter account. So thank you once again for joining us. Hope to see you at Vilnius University and have a good day. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. Bye bye. Okay. <laughs> it's the rap guys! <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, it's really great. Great? Uh -huh. How many? Uh, you know, I'm not going to do it.